Welcome back to Spring River Homestead. Today, let's talk about solar. We get a lot of questions on people that just don't understand the basics of solar. They don't want to know about numbers. They don't want to know about calculations. They really don't want to know about the flux capacitors. Okay, that one's a joke. Smile. Aha. There's no flux capacitors. Or is there? So today, let's just cover is take out all the numbers and equations, talk about just about how solar really operates. So to start with on solar, one of the things to always consider is that you need the sun, obviously. In a bright, beautiful day like today, sun hitting the panels makes power. Now obviously the sun hitting the panels, what this does is the panels absorb the sunshine and they turn it into power. Now there's two types of power out there, which is DC and AC. I'm not going to explain much of it, but no, AC is more like what you get in the house. DC is more like what you get in your car. This converts it to DC which is not usable for your house, and I'll explain why later. Now, as the panels absorb sunshine and convert it to power, it comes into these nodules here. So everything flows to this. Now, each panel itself, there are rows of them. So if I show you right here, there's a row of three, there's another row of three, and there's continuing all the way down. Each of these is wired in series, meaning one goes to the next, goes to the next, before it goes to the breaker box over here. Now each set of panels themselves are gonna run into this junction box. Each of these runs that side, each of these runs this side. Now these are just simple on off switches. They're a combiner, basically they take all the power from all the panels and run it into one feed going into the garage. Now these pieces on the side, these are just big surge protectors. They call them lightning arresters, but it's meant to be like a surge protector for your house. You get too much power, these things pop, and they protect all of your delicate equipment inside the shop or your garage, wherever you're storing it. They prevent power from overloading your system and doing too much damage. Now, if you notice on the tubes on the bottom, this is the power going in here. So you've got a power and a ground system going in this way, and then these flow into the shop. So power comes from there, combines here, is protected, goes into the garage. Okay, so now when your power comes into the shop, it's gonna come in through underground conduit. That's how we always wired in. But these are the inputs. So these coming in here are what comes in from the panels themselves that brings the power in. It comes up into this, which is a distribution center, and then it goes over to your chargers. Now the power here, you don't go straight to your batteries. What you wanna have is something that controls it to be able to charge your battery bank. So these here are dual power controllers or power chargers. So they run, uh, one is a primary, one is a secondary, and these go back out, they go in and then back out and they come out through this tube going into the battery bank. Now your batteries themselves are what you're gonna use for power when your solar panels are not charging. So this is probably gonna be on stormy days, snowy days, or at nighttime. That means that if you're not connected to anything else, the power is going to come out of your battery. So having a battery bank means during the day you're going to store the power until you need it later on to run in your fridge, your freezers, your TV, whatever else you're doing on your off, let's call it off power time, night, weekends, whatever it is that you're not making power, you need to pull it from somewhere. So now that you've got your power in your batteries, it needs to be converted into something the house can use. So these two pieces right here are what they just call simply inverters. Now you've got two of these. One is a, uh, they call it a master, one is a slave. Think of it as one is the primary use. And then when you have a large load for us, which is typically our well, or if a welder in the garage, you need more power than this can do. A second one jumps in to help out. Now these convert it from DC power, which think of it as like a car load, or it comes directly in the panel and your batteries. These convert it to AC, which then can go to the house and run anything in the house that normally would use AC power. You know, hair dryer, refrigerator, microwave, coffee maker, any of that kind of stuff. That goes into AC power. Now after your inverters, it goes over here to basically just a switch on off. And these have breakers in them to protect the equipment. You know, if the house overloads them, they can basically here turn off. And then beyond that, now this is just simply your fuse block panel here. So that turns off your house in that. So you've got the well, shop lights, 
this side, pantry, house, all that stuff. So this is just simply on off breakers, turn things on and off obviously, and then it protects the load of the power. Now, if you notice this little box on the wall, what this thing is, is called a mate. It's a power mate. Think of it as the brains that run everything. This stuff all kind of works in conjunction together, but it's really kind of dumb. It doesn't know if the inverters, the chargers are working, all that stuff. Well, the brain itself, the mate, tells everything how to run together. And I've also talked in the past about strategy of overcharging, undercharging, when to turn things off to protect for uh, draining your batteries out and that. That's what this does. So it's got a lot of settings in it, a lot of programming, way more program available than we actually need, but it gives you plenty of options of how to run your system and then how to make everything work together and safely basically make your system to go together. Don't overcomplicate it. Think of it as a smart PC, like a little computer that runs everything and makes sure it all works together, and that's it. There's a big manual like this big of it to explain it all. Don't overcomplicate it. It's the brains behind the brawn. Now let me quickly give you a snapshot of how easy this things can be used. So obviously you got your battery up here, right? Green is good. Yellow is, yeah, you're getting borderline. And red is, hey, no bueno, got to do something. So the inverter's on. Today is an overcharge day, which means we're going to overcharge the batteries, which means that's flashing. Uh, if your generator comes on right there, doing it. And then you've got obviously AC input, events, etc. Now the beauty of this thing is it is really, really, I'm going to say idiot proof if you set it up right. So if you look at ours, you can see in this top right, the arrow indicates that power is going up and batteries at 95% charged. That's the beauty of it. I always talk about percentages and when I say that at 75% it's going to turn off half the house, at 70 it's going to turn off uh, the full thing in the house to protect the batteries. That's the beauty of that. I know my batteries right now are 95% charged. Now this top one here is the sun coming in. So right now I'm making 2.4 kilowatts off my panels. I'm using 0.1 kilowatts or 100 watts out of there. And then right now my generator is off. But if the generator was on, that would scroll over this way. Now this tells me uh, how much I'm making, so the 2.4 is equivalent to this. And then when it flips over, this is how much power I have made today. So right now I'm making 2.2, and I've made total for the day 3.9. My battery voltage sits at 55 volts on a 48 volt system because I'm charging and pushing uh, voltage in, but this tells me voltage comparable to this the 95 I like this a lot easier to understand 95% versus 55 volts on a 48 volt system which is crazy and this tells you how much you're using right now I'm really not uh, pushing anything out to zero so we're good and then the generator volts is zero which is indi uh, indicative of this this is at zero so my generators are at zero all right, so we've mentioned previously about maintenance and that we have a backup diesel generator. Now what that does is it's going to obviously supply power to the system in place of your solar panels. The days that are uh, really bad for power that we need to charge the batteries in order to get through the night, the generator is manually operated, it's turned on, and that power is going to come in here. So these conduits here, one is going out, one is coming in. The in is from the generator, the out goes to the house, and we run that just on the bad days, really. A lot of times it's during the winter, um, you know, you occasionally have to in the summer if you've had a really bad power day, maybe it's full of storms and a lot of clouds, you're just not making enough power to run everything we need to, like our incubators, freezers, and that during the day. Now, the beauty of the system itself is that when the generator uh, delivers power into the panels themselves, the mate tells it where to go. So if the batteries need charge, the mate says, hey, send that power over to the chargers down into the batteries. If the house needs to run and needs a lot of that power, the mate can then uh, convert it over, send it right to the inverters, and send it back into the house. The generator is going to produce a DC similar to the solar, and that has to be inverted or converted into AC power to go into the house. 
So the mate is really the brains behind all of this. It kind of like is a traffic cop telling you the status of the system plus where the power goes. Does it go to the chargers? Does it need to go to the uh, inverters to be converted? Or does it need to go to the batteries through the chargers, etc.? Okay, so that's kind of how solar works. Comes in the panels, goes into the chargers, batteries to the house, gets converted all around, and there's something way smarter than me controlling it all. So now if this explanation was still not enough, let me know. Otherwise, I'm sorry if I got a little geeky there at the end. You know me, an engineer, some days they just, they just can't help themselves. So that's it from Sprague River Homestead. Hopefully that was a good basic explanation of how solar works, taking out the numbers and the equations and those darn flux capacitors. That's it. Happy homesteading.